because we are so far away from sustainability in this sector, even in our developed countries. So how we can tell them what they should do if we are not able to solve our own problems? Of course, we copy our pictures, our frame to their countries, and this is a big problem. So clearly, we know in the meantime we had made mistakes in the last 40, 50 years, dramatic mistakes, costly mistakes, and so we have to tell them don't repeat them, but they do it only faster. They should not build an infrastructure for road transport. They should understand a city like Peking, like Shanghai, like Singapore. They only can develop if they have a backbone of public transport and non-motorized transport. I think the reason why Singapore is so well doing economically is because they have an efficient transport system. If you're sitting as a businessman three hours in traffic, it's lost money. We have seen now in, in Asia, the ADP is starting a big project on investment for infrastructure. And of course, they don't finance own, not only any more roads, but said, OK, we have to finance BRTs. We have to finance non-motorized transport systems, which 10 years ago wasn't existing in their mind at all. So we have a huge change. And huge amount of money is now collected by ADP. They have a plan of billions of dollars for the next 10 years to invest in the Asian countries to promote better more sustainable infrastructure. The lack of data is a common problem in these countries. So most countries have not any, any map which describes correctly the city. They have no information on the, trend, on the traffic pattern, no information on pollution, so nothing on which you can rely if you want to change things. So the first thing is, of course, to improve the database. Get a better database. Data are weapons. Therefore, we need information to convince people that something is going wrong. I think it's an important issue. The question is, of course, how the planning process is going on. If you have no data, you make mistakes. But very often, we have seen things like flyovers, which we have dismantled all in Europe. They're all built now in Asia, very costly, and solve nothing. Or long one-way streets, or one-way lanes, which forces people to go long deviations to reach the point. We had cases of factor three to four, longer ways than you would like to get by direct connection because of these stupid on-way structures. And the people argue the traffic is flowing, which is ridiculous because if you have double of the time or the, the distance, of course, double of the cars on the road. It's very simple. But in spite of this, it's difficult to convince the people. That's the reason why we need such help from developed countries, which had made these mistakes and repaired it, but not so much on infrastructure, but more on capacity building, to help the people if they want to do something. The first mistake is, this is the goal of politician makers. The goal should be of the people. So my point is, what is the vision of the people living in the city? How should, should the city live, they live, look in 30 years? And this is not an issue of politicians, not an issue of the administration. This has to be defined by the people in the city. And this is also happening here. I just today a nice debate with the people of Bonn. Same situation. They said, we know what to do. Said, that is not my point. My point is, what is the vision for Bonn? And they have none. It, I think it's a disaster if you start to go and you have no way to better go. And this makes, of course, clear that you go in circles. The first point I always ask, what is your vision? What is your goals? And then you can define measures.